Back in 2005, I didn't even have a savings account. The only way that I knew how much money I had in my checking account was by going to the ATM and taking out a withdrawal. Now, I did have some investments, meaning that I was putting in $25 per month into a mutual fund because that's all I could afford. I was newly married and didn't know where I was going with my finances. Fast forward to present day and now I am a millionaire. And when I reflect back on where I was then, like how was I so broke having zero savings to now achieving millionaire status, I've been able to identify that it was having five key relationships, five millionaire relationships that allowed me to achieve this millionaire status. Today, we're gonna to look at what are these five millionaire relationships and stick to the end because I'm also gonna share the one relationship that you have to avoid at all costs if you ever want to achieve millionaire status. We're gonna find out what those are and more right now. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Wealth Hacker TV. I am your host, Jeff Rose, and welcome to the channel that's dedicated to teaching you new ways to grow wealth that is not taught to you in school or by your parents. And today we're talking about what are these five key millionaire relationships. Now, if you don't know this about me, like I was not raised with money. My parents didn't have any money. The house that I was in junior high to high school with, with my dad cost $8,000. Yes, $8,000 is how much the house cost. So I ate a lot of ramen noodles, I ate a lot of Totino's pizza growing up. So for me to achieve millionaire status, like this didn't happen on accident. It took a lot of hard work, a little bit of luck, and these five key relationships that I'm gonna share with you today. Now it's reported that only 3% of Americans have achieved millionaire status. So it is not an easy thing to do. And especially if you don't have these five key relationships. So the first relationship that you need is a coach. You need somebody that is going to challenge you, that's going to push you, that's going to bring out the best in you. Now it's funny, I can remember when I started my career as a financial advisor and the guy that hired me, he was a million dollar producer. And this is just a coveted title, a coveted status that most financial advisors want to achieve. So I would go to him for questions. I would go to him for advice. And I remember him telling me that he had hired a coach. And at the time, like I didn't get it. It's like, what do you mean you hired a coach? Like, like a golf coach or what do you need a coach for? Like it was a concept that was oblivious to me. But as I advanced in my career and my business grew, I started to recognize like I'm missing something, that there's something in my business, there's something in my career that I'm missing. And I thought back to that conversation I had with him and that's when I realized like I need to hire a coach. So the first coach that I hired was called the Strategic Coach. And this is ran by Dan Sullivan. And it is a business coaching program for entrepreneurs that is is just lights out. This was a program I was in for five years and it cost a pretty penny. At the time, I think it was like eight or $9,000 for one year. And from having never hired a coach before to spending nine grand, like that was a giant leap of faith. Now, obviously I had the money to do it, but like we didn't just have like nine grand just laying around ready to throw at some coaching program, especially when I didn't know if there would be any trackable results. I mean, you talk about this was a giant leap of faith, but it was something now I can reflect back on and think how amazing it was that I did it. The coaching program that I signed up for was more of a group coaching program, but you could also hire one-on-one -on -one coaches. Another mentor of mine, Michael Hyatt, he hired an executive coach when he was the CEO of Thompson Nielsen. So whatever you're trying to accomplish, whether it's a writing coach, a speaking coach, an executive coach, like there are different types of coaches that you can hire, but if you want to achieve millionaire status, like you need a coach. I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan, especially the Air Jordan ones, the Nike, the OGs, but I especially love this quote by Michael Jordan when it comes to having a good coach. Michael says, a coach is someone that sees beyond your limits and guides you to greatness. And that's what I love about all the coaches I had in my life because they have pushed me to my boundary. They have pushed me beyond that boundary and pushed me to my greatest limits. Millionaire relationship number two is a mentor. And I kind of already mentioned this in number one when I was talking about Michael Hyatt, who was and still is a mentor for me. Now, many people don't realize how to get a mentor, what a mentor really is, but do know this, 
It's reported that 86% of all millionaires seek active mentorship. That's right, they are seeking guidance, they are seeking help from those that have achieved what they want to achieve. But a common misconception is that you have to have an in-person mentor, that you have to meet with somebody and have coffee with somebody or get on the phone with somebody. But the reality is that you can seek mentorship from authors, from books, from blogs, from podcasts, from YouTube channels. Some of my earliest mentors were authors in Robert Kiyosaki, Dave Ramsey, Tim Ferriss. You know, it's their books that gave me the inspiration, gave me the, the ideas the thoughts, just the willingness to want more. And it's because of their mentorship through their books that inspired me to take action. In a recent interview I did with Jeff Goins, who is a best-selling author, he talked about the importance of seeking out mentors and the fact he went from having a nonprofit where he's making thirty-some thousand dollars a year to making $150,000 in six months. And he was able to achieve that because he sought out mentors. In his case, he sought out another blogger, another author that had achieved what he wanted to achieve. A mentor is just somebody that is one or two steps ahead of you that can show you how to accomplish whatever it is that you want to do. For me personally, I have sought out so many different mentors in my career. When it came to blogging, good friends of mine, Ryan Gana, who's the owner of CashMoneyLife.com, and Jim Wang, who used to own Bargaineering.com until he sold it for a lot of money and now owns WalletHacks.com, these two guys were willing to open up their blogging playbook and show me how they were able to do SEO and get traffic and monetize their blogs. And it's because of their mentorship is a big reason why I'm here today and have achieved amazing success with my blog. Before my book, Soldier of Finance came out, I didn't know how to become a published author, so I started seeking mentorship. Another good friend of mine, Ben Newman, who's also a published author and a motivational speaker, he was able to sit down with me and just share his experience on getting his books published with Wiley and having that mentorship. I can't tell you how valuable that is, that he could walk me through every little thing, all the things that he learned along the way that I didn't have to learn the hard way. Another mentor and friend featured on this channel, Grant Baldwin, is a former professional speaker, now a thriving online business. And before I was doing a talk, I had Grant watch me speak, I gave my entire presentation, I recorded it so that he could give me mentorship on how I could get on stage and kill it. And when I began the process of creating and launching my first online course, this is another thing I didn't know what to do or how to do it. I sought out mentorship from friends, John Corcoran from Smart Business Revolution and also Noah Kagan from OK Dork and AppSumo. Like these two guys know a ton about creating and marketing online courses and getting on the phone with them so they can walk me through the process and walk me through the different areas that I was stuck. I mean, that is what mentorship is all about. All right, the third key relationship that you need to achieve millionaire status is a Sherpa. So this is a guide, somebody that has already crossed the seven million mark and is willing to show you how they did it and is willing to meet with you and talk with you and guide you to have you achieve millionaire status. Now for me personally, like this is something I didn't have in the beginning. The closest thing I had to a Sherpa was the financial advisor, the broker that hired me back at my old investment firm. But whenever I left and started my own firm, like I didn't have him to go to anymore. So I began this journey of joining the coaching program and finding mentors. And as my business grew and as my career grew and my network grew, then I was able to come across some amazing men that were willing to sit down with me and show me how they did it. They were willing to peel back the curtain of their business and show me the ins and outs of how it works. Someone who I've already mentioned in this video, but he deserves another mention, Michael Hyatt. Michael Hyatt was a mentor to me. He was also a Sherpa. I was in his inner circle mastermind group for a year. And in that year, he peeled back the curtain. He opened the door of his business to show how amazingly ran it was. I mean, this guy was doing product launches. He was launching a new book. Uh, he was pre-launching a new product. He was reopening his platform university, his membership group. And I mean, this guy has a multi, multi-million dollar business and to see how it was run and how they could pivot from one business venture to the next at a drop of a hat. I mean, it was 
It was just amazing to see, and I am so grateful for that experience and to have a Sherpa like him show me that. Another Sherpa that was recently introduced to my life is Josh Axe, otherwise known as Dr. Axe. Josh has an amazing online business. You can check out his site at draxe.com and they were already a multi-million dollar business. Well, now they have a nutritional supplement line that they are going all in with. And when I first met him, his goal of selling his business was one billion, that is one with a big B, and that was just over a year ago, and since I've met him, that goal has actually increased to, I think, three to four billion. Yes, once again, that's billion with the B. Uh, this guy is in his mid to late 30s, and this is his vision. Like, this is what he's going to achieve. It's not a matter if he will, it's when he will. I mean, this guy is just that laser focused. And for him to share his business and how he makes decisions and how he says yes to certain things and no to other projects, I mean, that has been invaluable to me. The fourth key relationship that you need is a battle buddy, a good friend that's willing to speak truth into your life. Now, for those that don't know, so I was in the Army National Guard for nine years, so I was introduced to the battle buddy concept in the Army. Now, this is somebody that's going to be there for you no matter what, but most importantly, they're going to speak truth when you need to hear it. They're not going to be your cheerleader and just say rah, 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 and just cheer you on every step of the way, no matter how stupid some of the decisions that you make. No, this is somebody that's willing to give you praise when you need it, but they're also willing just to come in and just speak truth and slap you around if you start getting stupid and making dumb decisions. A battle buddy is someone that's going to keep you grounded and remember where you came from, what you stand for, and what is important to you so that you don't get distracted by the almighty dollar and start putting your family to the side and putting your friends to the side. They help you stay true to yourself and believe that you can accomplish what you set to do. The fifth millionaire relationship that you need in your life is a mastermind group. And before I discovered mastermind groups, like I don't even know how I did what I did. And I finally was introduced to what a mastermind group was, got into my first mastermind group, and since then I have been in several mastermind groups. Currently I'm in two mastermind groups. I'm leading a third mastermind group and these groups have given me so much value. Now the people in this mastermind group, they are in it with you. They know your struggles. They know exactly what you're going through. Now some of the people in this group, they may be a few steps ahead of you and you may have some others that are a few steps behind you, but collectively as a group, you can give so much value because you can pick other people's brains or you can run ideas behind them to see, hey, does this make sense? Is this something that I should consider? Do you think I should do this business opportunity? Do you think I should act on this investment? All those times that you have to make an important decision, but you don't know where to go. You don't know if you have anybody that can truly understand what you're dealing with and what you're trying to figure out. Having a mastermind group to share that with, my goodness, it is such an amazing thing. You can check out my other video where I talk about how to start a mastermind group and what a mastermind group looks like if that is something that you want to consider, but if you want to, then you should. All right, so we talked about the five key relationships that you need to have. What about the one that you need to avoid? Well, the one that you need to avoid is called a blue Falcon. That's right, a blue falcon. Now, once again, getting this from the military, getting from the army, a blue falcon, this is the person that is just set out to ruin you. They don't care about you. They don't care about what you're trying to achieve. They don't care if you have big visions, big goals of achieving some amazing things. A blue falcon is the person that wants to just continually tear you down. They want to remind you of all the things that you've done wrong, all the ways that you failed. Every great idea that didn't work out, like that is what the blue falcon is all about. And these are the people that you gotta cut out of your life. You just got to get them out, get them out, tune them out. Don't want to listen to them anymore. I've had a ton of blue falcons in my life and I just had to learn. I just got to get away. Like these people are toxic. They are ruining me. They are making me think small when I have the potential to go big and I don't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. It's no question that I never would have achieved millionaire status if it wasn't for these key relationships. The people, the conversations, the meetings, like it's just the, the wealth of information that has been passed down. 
I mean, that alone is well worth more than a million dollars and I'm grateful for it. So do you have these key relationships in your life? If you don't, what do you need to do to get them into your life? Do you need a mentor? Do you need a coach? Do you need a mastermind group? Figure out how you can get it into your life so that you can start achieving your goal of becoming a millionaire and hacking your wealth. All right, y'all, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.